Hello and welcome to another Adult Coloring Tuesday tutorial. I'm your host and your artist, Lisa Mitrokin. I hope you like fairies because we have a whole month of fairy related art ahead of us and I want to give you a head start on some awesome transparent wing coloring techniques and share a little coloring drama. I wasn't kidding about the entire month of fairy madness. It's called February. And it's when a bunch of us adult line artists and YouTubers get together for a weekend of non-stop live streaming of fairy art coloring. There will be amazing sales on Etsy on art pages by many artists, including yours truly. And coloring groups will be saturated with fairy topics and events for weeks to come. Technically, I'm not supposed to talk about it yet but that cat's way out of the bag on Facebook already. I will keep you updated on all the exact details as we get closer to the event though. I thought it would be very fitting to bring it up today because by a free cosmic coincidence, today's topic, which was decided and scheduled over a month ago, is on fairies. You guys remember that the winner of my last coloring event, Heather, got to request that I draw anything at all that she asks and make a video on the subject. She requested that I bring to life a very specific vision of hers, a strong and confident warrior fairy with purple, blue, and yellow wings, and a big, strong, but kind wolf as her companion animal. Based on that description, I drew this page. Part of the deal was also that it will be available to all of my Facebook group members. So if you would like to color this page and are not already a member of Tom, come join the group. The PDF will be available in the um, album called YouTube Pages. Looking at this page, it may appear quite complicated, intimidating even. There's a lot of tiny detail here, and also the composition is very tricky with the way that the wolf is positioned behind the wing. This was a challenge even for me to color, and I drew it. And it took me twice as long as usual to complete this coloring, maybe even longer. So if you're feeling a little overwhelmed right now, there's no shame in that. We'll color it together. And you'll see that I too sometimes get stuck, make mistakes, and encounter problems that I have to solve and that have me doubting if I should even continue at all or just start from scratch. True to my style, I started this coloring by establishing white highlights. I imagine very soft and diffuse daylight here. Nothing that will cast dramatic shadows, just basic straight on directional lighting that illuminates my main character clearly. In fact, she's probably facing the sun. I chose to work on gray toned paper and I applied the white highlights with white charcoal, one of my favorites. I decided that the wings will be mostly transparent, so I added some white highlights as a shimmer to the wing area as well. This will get completely covered up in the coloring process and it's not a necessary step, but for me it's helpful to define the wings. It makes them easier to see, otherwise the shape and the detail can get a little bit confusing, especially with that wolf in the background. I took the time to define the most important parts of the wolf face with the white charcoal as well, mainly the eye and the fur around the eye. And then I jumped right into the wing color. As requested, purple. This is actually a very unusual workflow for me. Normally I would start with the fairy and all the details of her skin tone, her features, her hair, all the little decorations, and leave the wings and the wolf last. But since the wings are the main point of this tutorial, I figured I should just start with them and at least have them done in case I don't finish the whole page in time. These wings are interesting because at this point in the coloring, I had no idea what I was doing. I had a general vision of the colors that I wanted and I knew that the bases of the wings should be darker and the tips lighter, but I had no reference photos or paintings to go on, just color requests and a feeling. So far so good. I built up my lilac and purple layers, creating a nice gradient from bright purple at the base of the wings to white at the tips. These wings have a little bit of texture in the line work, but when drawing this page, I didn't want to make these designs too definitive. They're more like suggestions. And the reason I did that is to allow the colorist the option to create an illusion of shimmer. So while adding color, I was also starting to build up some of these shapes that you can see in the wings. I moved on to add soft blue. I really love this pencil. It's just such an amazing tint of blue. It's so gentle and it works beautifully with lilac and purple. I use this blue to define the wolf some more. 
At this stage, I was only concerned with the parts of the wolf that can be seen through the wing. Another way to approach such designs is to completely color the character in the background and then add the wing effects with lighter pencils, pastels, or paints. But my personal challenge for myself was to be able to color just the wings and have them look good, wolf and all. Even if I decided to leave the rest of the page blank, it would still look good. For the tips of the wings, I used sand yellow very gently, not really blending with the blue and purple at all. I added a few yellow lines here and there, but I completely avoided blending. I mainly used this color to make the wolf more easily visible, so that all the parts of the wings that we see that are wolf are purple and everything outside the wolf is yellow. This is very different from my usual coloring style. I tend to go more for realism, but this time I went a bit more cartoony. Which is quite ironic, actually. I mentioned this term cartoony in my last episode, and I feel that some people may have misunderstood my meaning a bit. I think that some of you heard it as a negative term. Like, a cartoony style is somehow inferior to a realistic style, and that's not the case at all. They're both very different and very excellent styles. It's just that my glow effect episode was demonstrating a technique especially for a realistic effect. And I pointed out that this other way of doing it would be great if you're going for a cartoony look, but that's not the look that I was teaching. So it's important to decide on the look that you want to achieve and stick to it. For example, if you want photorealism, you probably need to find a way to remove the outlines. There are no outlines in real life. That doesn't mean that outlines themselves are bad. It just means that they're the wrong effect for the style that you're going for. Same thing with light rays. You can draw beautiful fantasy style or realistic style sun rays, um, for instance, as they're seen through the clouds or forest canopy or through water, but just adding line rays around a light bulb will have a completely different feel. And sometimes that's the feel that you want to achieve. Neither is necessarily good or bad. It's just that you need to know what style you're settled on. So here, even though my drawing of the fairy is very anatomically accurate and realism is very tempting, the whole composition with the frame and the wolf and the fact that she's a fairy with wings makes it very inviting to choose to go cartoony. Or maybe more like poster art or that fancy wine bottle label art. You know the kind? The Art Nouveau kind of illustrations? Anyway, what am I doing up there? Ah, I was just blending my wing shimmer with a light blue pencil. This is a very pale blue, like ice blue. Gorgeous pencil. Prismacolor, of course. And then, then I did something that I would immediately regret. I added veins to the wings with a gold pen and also covered the black outlines with a white gel pen. It seemed like a good idea at the time. But see how thick it made the edge of my wing though? It's a bit too thick. My idea was to make the outline invisible, but because I already had a lot of white shading right up against the edge, adding that other line of white had the opposite effect. While before the wings looked dainty and transparent and kind of trailing off into the distance, suddenly they just looked very flat and heavily outlined. I wanted cartoony, but not this cartoony. You can see here I was trying to fix my mistake with a gold pen by covering some of the white, but it made matters even worse. Now they look more like plastic prop wings that you can get at a costume store. They actually look fake and synthetic. I was freaking out at this point. So I did the most sensible thing that I could think of. I took a break from the wings to color the rest of the wolf. But that wasn't enough, so I did the next most sensible thing. I took a lunch break. And when I came back, I was able to reassess my situation. I saw that not all was lost, that it actually looked fine. It just didn't match my expectation. So I revisited my vision, brought it more into focus in my mind, and realized that what I wanted was less white shimmer and glitter and more vibrant colors and definition on the wolf fur. Clearly stating that in my mind allowed me to get right back on my horse. I went back to my purple colors, using them to build up the saturation levels and also to cover some of that white outline. That immediately improved things. Next, I took a 10% gray pencil, my go-to blending tool, and applied it very generously all over covering and even scraping off in some places those awful little white sketch marks that I put everywhere. They were just too stark, too white, too out of place for my vision. But apparently they were necessary, because without trying to get rid of them, I wouldn't have achieved this awesome new effect. How cool is that? I upgraded my blue to China blue and used it to do more work on the wolf. I really like the way the wolf came out. Now a purple upgrade. 
I wanted to go darker around the base of the wings and darker pencils also allowed me to get more detail on the fur and I found that I was adding swirls and curls everywhere. Remember, I am in a cartoony mood. And now you will call me a hypocrite, but I went back to my white gel pen. Why? Well, now it makes sense, but for a different reason. I suddenly had so much texture and definition that adding white would actually benefit the structure of the wings. The trick was to apply the gel pen in a different way. Previously, I didn't like the effect because I just added clean white lines everywhere. Now I want white pigment, but I want it to look more like brush strokes. So actually white acrylic paint or white pastels would work just as well here, if not better, but I already had my white gel pen nearby, so I just went for it. I used it pretty heavily on the edges, but smearing it with a Q-tip this time, while the gel was still fresh and wet. You may remember this effect from the pink Christmas tree coloring. Now I like the white. Now it serves a totally different purpose. So it's not that the gel pen itself was wrong, it's that I used it in a wrong way and at the wrong point in my coloring. But by now I thought, well, this is a bloody mess of a video. I should just print a new page and start all over so that I can give you guys clear step-by-step -step instructions that you can follow. And then I thought again, and I decided that showing you the real process is a more valuable lesson. Not all of my coloring projects go smoothly. Sometimes I get stuck. Sometimes I create problems for myself that I then have to figure out how to solve. And the moral of the story is problems are great and challenges are great. I am super happy with how these wings turned out in the end, but all of the things that I love about them came to be only because I was figuring out how to get rid of those awful little white lines that I put in by mistake. So remember that next time you color. I'm sure that you have days like this as well, where you try something new and it just totally backfires. Don't get discouraged. Don't stop working on it. 99% of the time, if I keep working and just keep trying to solve the problem, I accidentally discover a cool new effect that I can later reproduce, but wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Here, the cool effect is the high contrast between purple and white and working in the lines of the wings with the lines of the wolf fur. And this is when I had a clear vision of the rest of the page. I added lilac to my wolf fur all over, which was a really good decision. And I also realized that the wings barely had any golden yellow in them at all, and it was one of my requested colors for the wings. So I decided to bend the rules a bit and instead add the yellow colors to the rest of the page. Remember, I'm working with requested colors, so I don't have as much flexibility in my color choices as usual. So for my next big decision on this, I chose to stick with a very basic color palette. No additional major colors, just purples and yellows, and that's it. I even kept my skin tone coloring down to just three pencils, chestnut, eggshell, and purple. I made sure to keep all the areas immediately around the fairy and her hair very dark to make her stand out by contrast. I intentionally made her hair so pale it's almost white. Again, so that it stands out. And I made all of her dress and decorations golden yellow to compensate for the lack of those colors in the wings. Since this is a wings coloring tutorial, I won't go into full detail on the skin, the hair, and the jewelry. We'll have plenty of time for all that jazz in February. But Heather did have some other specific questions for me that I would like to address now. She wanted me to explain how to decide on light placement on various three-dimensional shapes, specifically concave and convex shapes and coloring pages. How can you even tell if a shape bends inwards or bulges outwards? And once you know, how do you color it? This is very interesting, but can be very tricky. First, most objects have more convex surfaces, meaning rounded outwards. Looking at the body of our fairy, for instance, she's pretty much entirely made up of convex shapes. Her face has the rounded cheeks, the lips, the tip of the nose, the eyeballs around it, the face itself is somewhat spherical, her shoulders, her chest, her breasts, her belly, but there are very few areas here that go inwards. The only parts being the area under the chin, which we can't even really see in this illustration, some parts of her hair with the curls, and that little part of her dress that's kind of inside her skirt. And that's really it. Maybe her armpits. Now, how do you know and recognize these areas? You recognize them from real life most often. We all know what a human figure looks like. So when we see a face, it's obvious to us that the cheekbones are protruding outwards and are not sunken in. Most coloring pages that you will encounter feature subjects that are recognizable. Now for the more abstract design part, you can decide for yourself. Sometimes it's not clear from the line work. And then I say, just make whatever you think looks best. For instance, in this page, you can make all these little areas between the vines convex, meaning going deeper into the page, and the vines themselves textured outwards. 
or the other way around? Which takes us to the next question. How do you make it obvious which way the surface bends? The simplest answer is, generally speaking, when objects bulge out, they tend to reflect most light on the higher points. That's the white highlights that you always see me establishing in the beginning of each coloring. Without getting into light sources and every possible light and surface texture and color scenario, in a nutshell, in general lighting, bulging items will have a lighter center. In things that cave in, they tend to be darker because it's harder for light to get in there. Of course, anything is possible, and you can have concave surfaces that are perfectly lit and reflecting all the light. But again, this topic is pretty much endless. I can teach light sources and surface reflection for years to come and never run out of material. But I suspect that what you want right now, Heather, is a quick and dirty trick for immediate application. So the quickest and the dirtiest that I can give you is, if it reaches towards you, give it more light. And if it hides from you, give it less light. Also, objects that stick out tend to cast shadows, while surfaces that cave in do not. But also keep in mind that it's always situational. Know your overall light source and keep it consistent throughout the whole coloring. In the void, a concave and a convex surface lit the same way may appear identical. That's how many optical illusions work. But in a well-structured scene with recognizable objects and a consistent light source, the rest of the coloring will also enhance the effect. So I hope this makes sense. I will certainly bring more attention to concave and convex surfaces as I encounter them in the future, because it takes more than a single explanation to really master all the techniques. It takes practice and practice on different subjects. I hope you enjoyed this very strange episode on coloring wings. It certainly is a different experience for me to share things that are imperfect. I feel that we are friends here though, and we should be open and honest, good, bad, or ugly, but hopefully, always finding a way to make it good and beautiful. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that thumbs up button for me and do subscribe to my channel if you don't already. I'm trying to get to my next milestone, which is a thousand subscribers. So any help that I can get from you, tell your friends, tell your friends to tell their friends, subscribe. And remember, come join my group on Facebook, Tom, the art of Lisa Mitrokin. Find the album called YouTube Pages and try your hand at this coloring as well. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Let's roll the credits and the time-lapse, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!